Let's consider another system of equations here. Suppose that we're looking at y equals negative 2x plus 5. In this case, our slope is negative 2 over 1. Our y-intercept is 5, and we can plot that without too much trouble over here on our graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is our y-intercept, slope of negative 2 over 1. We can use that down 2 over 1 to grab a couple of points here along the way. Um, kind of like that. Connect the dots. So there's one line. Our other equation here, uh, y equals 3x minus 7, another linear equation, has a slope of 3 over 1 and a y-intercept of negative 7. We can start this by plotting our negative 7 down this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and use my slope of 3 over 1. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, and connecting those points. little bit off there, but that's okay. Um, you can see that what we've got here is we've got an intersection point. It's happening someplace in between 2 and 3. It's a little bit above the y-axis. Um, and so I've got an idea of where that solution is, but it doesn't really seem to actually be lying on a nice specific point. Um, and that's really one of the weaknesses of graphing as a way of working with and solving problems. So what I'd like to do in this video is show you how to leverage uh, graphing by using technology to sketch those graphs and identify those places of intersection for us. So uh, in this video, we are going to use a web tool called Wolfram Alpha. And um, if you're interested in doing this on the graphing calculator, I've, you can watch the video previous to this in the playlist. Um, this, so up here, www.wolframalpha.com is a very powerful um, mathematical website, and it works really nicely to be able to help to solve and illustrate some of the things that you might be interested in doing. So for example here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to solve the system y equals negative 2x plus 5 and y equals 3x minus 7. Now this is a very powerful tool. It is very particular in how you want to write and type different things, so do be careful. Um, I really recommend making sure that you use x and y anytime you're dealing with uh, function variables. Make sure they're lowercase, some of those things. Uh, sometimes it does things nicely, sometimes it gets a little bit confused. Um, using the word and is nice, using the word solve is nice, but let's see what awesome things happen. So here when we hit equals, this is going to pull up our tool here. And notice that what it's done for us here is it's come up with uh, an actual solution point and it's sketched the graph for us of what's going on. Now one of the nice things that Wolfram Alpha does is it plots two different versions of the plots um, and so you can see them at different scales. So it's very important as you're looking at what these graphs are doing that you pay attention to the scales along the bottom. For example, this bottom graph down here has counting by ones this way and then counting by fives on the y-axis. This one here gives you a much closer view in. Notice this is just going from 2.3 up to 2.55 and from zero up to 0.6, counting in real small values. So this is really zooming in on the intersection point, which is generally the most interesting point that we have. And then down here we have a little bit bigger of a zoomed out version. So a very powerful tool. You can definitely get some nice pictures of graphs in here and work and gives you something really nice that you can work with. Um, again, it gives your the, uh, the, the readout that you get after you run your search or your solving um, query here is it's going to give you uh, the X and the Y values. Now you want to think of these as an ordered pair when we report them. Um, here it's given it to you in fractional form, but if you click on approximate form, it will give you a decimal value approximation for that. So here, according to our graph sections, we can come over here and see that at 2.4.2, we can get the actual coordinates of that intersection point. So we can use the, the calculator or computer tools in order to get a more precise view of those intersection locations. And uh, Wolfram Alpha does a great job of that. 
Um, what I'd like to do here is just a couple of additional examples. Um, we'll go ahead and pull up Wolfram Alpha. I'm going to shrink this a little bit so we can have a little bit more of a side-by-side -side view for going back and forth between them. Okay. Um, and so for our next example here, what we'd like to do is look at y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 6 and y equals 2x minus 4. So we can go ahead and scroll back up to the top. If you click on this part of our window here, we still want to use the word solve, and then we want to put our two equations in that we uh, for our system. So we're going to have y equals 2x squared. Now, make sure that you use that little caret key for x squared, minus 3x minus 6. And then we can put our other equation, y equals 2x minus 4. And then we can just go ahead and hit this equal symbol again. It's going to take a couple seconds to think about it. It's been able to solve, and now notice in terms of the results that it's got two different points here. And that shouldn't surprise you. We've got a quadratic equation. Um, the last example that we did, we did some sketching. Uh, and in fact, if we look at our sketching here, we'll see some interesting values. Now, this first plot is interesting to look at, but notice that we don't actually see any intersections anywhere in the picture that it's given us. So this second picture is probably going to be a little bit more useful to you in terms of locations and values. Um, again, pay attention to the scale. One of the things that I want you to do on your homework is to draw a sketch of what you see and then to actually identify the points of intersection. So in this case, notice that we've got a parabola. It's dipping down to maybe five below here. It hits a low point right about one and then starts going up again. We have intersections down here in the third quadrant and an intersection slightly up here in the first quadrant. And we can use that to kind of help us out a little bit. If you want to gear in a little bit closer, um, you can see these points here and you can use those to get a better view of how this is going to work in our in our sketch. So we're going to have a parabola that's going to kind of dip down here in this region like this. We're going to have a line that's going to come up, let's see, through negative 3 and negative 2. Does that look about right? And then we have some intersection points here and here that we can identify. So doing some sort of a sketch like this where you can kind of approximate what you see on your on your computer screen and translate that over and then I actually identify the ordered pair coordinates of what's going on. Well where do the ordered pair coordinates come in? And again it's gonna, it, this is a very powerful tool and you can pay to make it even more powerful than this so it's got a lot of impressive pieces to it. But notice here in my results We'll shrink this a little bit so maybe we can see them. There's an x-coordinate. They've got a really fancy, rat, simple, simple radical form, or we can just go ahead and, and for our purposes, we'll just go ahead and use those uh, decimal approximations. So the first one here is at negative 0.35 and negative 4.7. Negative 0.35 and negative 4.7. And again, my graph's not perfect here by any means. Over here, um, we've got a spot coming in at 2.85 and 1.7 as my second set of coordinates. And you can play around with your graph a little bit to try to get that a little bit more precise. Um, but what I'm interested in, especially besides a basic graph shape look, is uh, these actual coordinates of intersection points. Um, now, the nice thing about Wolfram Alpha and using technology is we can graph things that maybe we're not as familiar with. Uh, in our class, we learned a little bit about exponential equations, but not really about the graphs that they create. However, we could still ask Wolfram Alpha to work on that for us. So for example, here we could ask the computer to solve y equals 5 times 3 to the x power. And again, if they use parentheses in your system, I kind of recommend that you use those again over here just to prevent any confusion. Um, over here, we also, for our second equation, want y equals negative 2x plus 7. Um, let's pull this over here to do a little bit more magic. We'll hit the equals button. It does its thinking thing. And now we get some interesting results. Now, um, as we go through and look at these, here we see um, 
a real solution, and that's really what we're interested in here. And notice there's an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate that goes along with that. So uh, the mathematics involved in some of this is more, way more than what we actually do sometimes in our class. But um, being able to look at things from this perspective, we're able to get what those uh, decimal approximations are in terms of our picture. Um, as we look down here, this blue graph is our exponential graph. It kind of levels out close to zero and then it increases very quickly. Notice how large our y values get. And in our second graph, we even have a bigger scale so that you can see how fast those go. And then we have a linear equation that cuts through here in red. In this particular case, notice that it just crosses at one spot on the graph. And so when we come up here and we see our real solutions, we just see one real solution. So that's kind of cool. Um, again, as you go over here and you try to do your sketch, if you can kind of grab an approximate value here. Um, so it's going to come up like this really fast. And then our other graph is going to be coming down like this. I know that goes through seven because of this. I missed it by a little bit. Um, but then you can identify the ordered pair location of their intersection, which is 0.24 and 6.51. 0.24 and 6.5, probably 5.2. And that will give you a better location of that intersection position. Uh, the website, again, if you need that, is www.wolframalpha.com, and that'll get you started there. They've also got a pretty decent uh, web app as well, if you're interested in that.